Our film begins with Philip, a French millionaire with a passion for art and music, but who suffers from quadriplegia and uses a wheelchair due to a past accident. Philip has an assistant named Driss, whose job is to take care of him and help him with everything. Driss often drives at high speeds and tries to convince Philip to try new things and enjoy his time. Suddenly, Driss sees the police trying to stop him for speeding. He feels excited and bets Philip $100 that he can distract the police and escape. Driss initially succeeds in evading the police, but they eventually catch up. However, Driss doesn't give up and bets Philip another $200 to let the police escort them to their destination, even though he doesn't have a driver's license. Philip agrees, excited by Driss's adventurous and challenging spirit. Driss gets out of the car, and the police suspect him to be dangerous. However, Driss acts and tells them that he is the assistant to the disabled man in the car. He shows the police Philip's wheelchair and continues his act, claiming that Philip had a stroke and they are rushing to the hospital. He tells them that if they don't reach the hospital within five minutes, Philip will die and it will be their fault. Philip participates in Driss's act and pretends to be sick. The police get scared and agree to escort them to the hospital themselves. The police are so scared that they offer to drive them to the hospital themselves. Driss gets back in the car, happy to have won the bet, and Philip is overjoyed with the experience. The police escort them to the hospital. As soon as the police leave, Driss gets back into the car and speeds off again. Let's rewind to when Driss was applying for the job of caring for Philip. There were many other candidates being interviewed by Philip's personal assistant, Magali. Philip wasn't impressed with any of the experienced applicants. Driss was waiting outside, feeling bored and annoyed. He sees some golden egg-shaped sculptures and decides to steal one of them. He wasn't even interested in the job. He just wanted Philip to sign a document stating that he applied for the job so he could receive social assistance. Driss catches Philip's attention with his humor and unique way of speaking. Philip is intrigued and tells him he will sign the document the next day. Driss is overjoyed and returns home after a six-month absence. He lives in a modest house with a large family. The situation is so bad that Driss can't even take a shower without at least three children being in the bathroom with him. He feels frustrated and upset and waits for his mother to return. He sees his younger brother getting out of a strange car and asks him where he has been. His brother claims he was at school, but Driss knows he is lying and is probably involved with a drug gang. When Driss's mother arrives, he gives her the stolen egg as a reconciliation gift. She scolds him for not talking to her for six months and for not even knowing how they are paying the household expenses or rent. Driss tells his mother that he doesn't know how to talk to her and that she doesn't listen to him. His mother sits next to him and asks him what he wants to say, but Driss is too embarrassed and can't tell her anything. His mother kicks him out of the house and tells him she doesn't want to see him again. Driss is devastated and spends the night on the street with a group of homeless people. The next morning, he takes the metro to Philippe's house. There, he meets Yvonne, the housekeeper, who gives him a tour of the house. Driss doesn't understand why she is showing him the house, because he will just take his papers and leave. He jokes with her that he's not going to buy the house today. Yvonne tells him that Philippe asked her to show him his room and tell him his schedule. Driss enters the room that will be his own if he accepts the job. It has a big bed, a beautiful painting, and all the amenities he could want. He sees the bathroom and is amazed by it. He can't believe he could have his own bathroom. He spends more time dreaming in the bathroom than in the bedroom itself. Yvonne calls him to meet Philippe. Philippe offers him the job, even though he has no experience and is very clumsy. However, Philippe likes him and tells Driss to try the job for a month. If he can make it past the month, he will keep him. Driss agrees because of the bathroom, which he has always dreamed of having. Yvonne trains Driss on everything he needs to do, such as how to lift Philippe properly, how to feed him, and how to help him use the bathroom. Driss learns all the tasks required of him but he is very careless and indifferent. At one point, he is in his room and doesn't hear Philippe calling him. Another time, he spills tea on Philippe's leg and acts nonchalantly as if Philippe doesn't need help and acts spontaneously. However, Philippe is happy with Driss 
and helps him read his mail. Driss puts each letter in its appropriate file. There is a letter from the lawyer asking Philippe to meet him, and there is another letter in red. As soon as Philippe sees the red letter, he tells Driss not to open it and looks nervous. One day, Driss was taking a shower when Yvonne came in and told him to get ready because Philippe was going to meet his lawyer. Suddenly, Yvonne sees Driss's bag open and finds a knife and other sharp tools inside. She gets very scared and calls the lawyer to tell him what she saw. Driss and Philippe take Philippe's car, which is specially equipped for people with disabilities who sit in the back in a wheelchair. Driss tells Philippe that he won't make him ride in the back as if he were his horse and that he has the right to ride in the front like everyone else. Philippe owns a collection of cars, so Driss chooses one of them and Philippe sits next to him. Philippe is overjoyed with the different things he does with Driss. When opening the garage door, Driss almost hits another car driven by their neighbor. Philippe tells Driss that he has warned him several times, but he doesn't care. Driss gets very angry and quarrels with their neighbor and hits him. Philippe, a wealthy quadriplegic man, finds joy in Driss, his caretaker, who possesses a strong personality and commands respect from everyone around him. However, Philippe's lawyer expresses concern about Driss after discovering his criminal past, a six month prison sentence, and an impoverished background. The lawyer believes that Driss, being a black man, may lack empathy and could potentially harm or exploit Philippe. Philippe dismisses these concerns, stating that he appreciates Driss's lack of pity as he doesn't desire sympathy. He emphasizes that Driss treats him as a friend, often forgetting his disability and interacting with him as an equal. Despite the lawyer's attempts to convince Philippe to reconsider, he remains firm in his decision to keep Driss. One day, Philippe asks Driss to accompany him to an art gallery. He becomes captivated by a peculiar painting, staring at it for over half an hour, much to Driss's annoyance. Driss mocks Philippe's fascination with the seemingly meaningless artwork and questions why people care about art, believing it to be merely a business. Philippe responds, stating that art is the only lasting trace humans leave behind after death. Philippe inquires about the price of the painting, which is quoted at $40,000. Driss is astonished and urges the employee to double-check the price, assuming it must be a mistake. While the employee verifies, Driss expresses his disbelief that someone would actually buy a painting with just two dots of blood for such an exorbitant amount. Philippe calmly assures him that he will indeed purchase it. The employee returns admitting there was an error in the price. Driss rejoices, thinking it will be cheaper, but the employee reveals an even higher price. To Driss's astonishment, he nearly faints and decides he will also start painting similar pieces. Later at Philippe's house, Driss enjoys dinner with Yvonne, the house manager, and uses a device that allows him to listen in on Philippe. He hears Philippe dictating a letter to his assistant, Magali, filled with poetry and prose. Driss is drawn to the beautiful language until Yvonne turns off the device, deeming it inappropriate to eavesdrop. Intrigued, Driss inquires about the letters Philippe writes. Yvonne reveals they are for Eleonore, the woman Philippe loves. Their relationship exists solely through written correspondence. They have never met or even heard each other's voices. Driss finds it hard to believe that a relationship can flourish solely on letters, highlighting the unique bond between Philippe and Eleonore. In the dead of night, Driss is awakened by Philippe's voice over the intercom. Philippe sounds exhausted and struggles to breathe, but Driss, initially wanting to stay asleep, is driven by his conscience to check on him. He finds Philippe suffering from a high fever and difficulty breathing. Driss tries to comfort him, applies cold compresses, and stays awake by his side. As Philippe's condition worsens, he expresses a need for fresh air. Driss helps him into his wheelchair, and they embark on a nighttime stroll through the streets of Paris. The cool air and beautiful sights bring a sense of calm and joy to Philippe. They discuss Philippe's recurring episodes, diagnosed by doctors as illness anxiety disorder, meaning he experiences physical symptoms due to his fear of medication. Driss encourages Philippe to confront this fear and find a way to overcome it. Feeling better and happy, Philippe takes Driss on an adventure, 
showing him different places and sharing marijuana and cigarettes. They end up at a restaurant where Philippe shares his story. He talks about his wife, Elise, whom he met in college and fell deeply in love with. After years of trying to conceive, Elise suffered several miscarriages, leading them to adopt a child. Sadly, Elise was later diagnosed with a serious illness and passed away. He mentions wanting the egg she took from him and smiles. Philippe reveals his desire to recover a stolen golden egg, a precious gift from Elise that she gave him every year on their anniversary. Driss, initially hesitant and denying any involvement, promises to find it. Continuing his story, Philippe describes a day with terrible weather when he decided to go skydiving. Due to strong winds, he crashed and broke two vertebrae in his spine, resulting in quadriplegia and his current condition. Driss is deeply affected by Philippe's life story, witnessing how it transformed from idyllic to devastating. However, Philippe remains optimistic, believing that advancements in medicine and his wealth will allow him to live a long life with medication and physical therapy. They share a laugh together. The next day, Driss receives a call from his sister, informing him that their brother has been arrested for drug possession and needs bail. Driss assures her he will handle it and asks her to search for the golden egg at home. He then visits his sister at school and inquires about the egg, but she hasn't found it. Driss feels anxious as he wants to return the egg, realizing its importance to Philippe. After dropping his sister off at home, Driss goes to the police station and bails out his brother, who shows no remorse and claims the small amount of drugs wouldn't have led to jail time. He urges Driss to join him in his car and change his path, but his brother becomes agitated, tells Driss not to interfere in his life, and gets into his usual car. Driss feels helpless, disappointed, and unable to help his brother. Returning to Philippe's house, he finds him dictating a letter to his beloved Eleanor with Magali's help. Driss feels bored and tries to convince Philippe to develop their relationship and at least see what Eleanor looks like. He jokingly suggests she might be overweight or unattractive, but Philippe dismisses his concerns, emphasizing that his love for her is intellectual and emotional, transcending physical appearance. Driss takes Eleanor's letter and discovers she has written her phone number. He decides to call her despite Philippe's protests. Eleanor answers, and Driss puts the call on speakerphone while he and Magali leave the room. Philippe is overjoyed to finally hear his beloved's voice. Philip and Driss go to the opera house, where Driss tries to convince Philip to send his picture to Eleanor so she can send hers in return. They watch a play with an actor dressed as a tree singing, which Driss finds hilarious and mocks, while Philip laughs at his spontaneity. Back home, Driss looks through Philip's old photos before sending one to Eleanor. Philip's daughter, Lisa, enters Driss's room without permission, angering him. She smiles sarcastically and finds him painting a strange-looking picture, mocking his lack of knowledge. Driss complains to Philip about her rudeness, and Philip reprimands Lisa, emphasizing the importance of respect. Inspired by the price of a painting Philip bought, Driss decides to become an artist and finishes his own painting. Philip admires it and asks to keep it in his office. On Philip's birthday, a grand party is held at the mansion with music and guests. Philip shows Driss's painting to an art-interested friend, claiming the artist is unknown and had an exhibition in Berlin. The friend is impressed, and they jokingly inflate the painting's value to 11,000 euros. During the party, Philip tries to find music Driss enjoys but fails. Driss takes over and plays popular music, getting everyone to dance and celebrate. Philip is happy and amused by Driss's efforts to bring joy. Later, Driss hears crying from Lisa's room. He finds her wanting to commit suicide because her boyfriend, Bastion, broke up with her and insulted her. Lisa begs Driss to talk to Bastion on her behalf, offering payment, which he eventually accepts. That night, Driss gives Philip his gift, a letter and photo from Eleanor. Philip is captivated by her beauty. The letter mentions her arrival in Paris the next day. Philip becomes nervous about meeting Eleanor, fearing rejection due to his wheelchair. Driss reassures him, emphasizing Eleanor's interest and her personality that wouldn't focus on appearances. Before the meeting, Philip goes to the restaurant with Yvonne. Driss, fulfilling his promise to Lisa, 
confronts Bastion outside the university. He threatens to retaliate against Bastion's treatment of Lisa, making him agree to bring her breakfast daily out of fear. In a bustling restaurant, Philippe, a wealthy quadriplegic man, sits riddled with anxiety and fear. Meanwhile, Driss, a young man from the projects, stands outside his mother's workplace, where she toils as a cleaning lady. He feels a profound sadness for her circumstances and disappointment in himself. He waits for her to finish work. At the restaurant, Philippe instructs Yvonne, his assistant, to call Driss. He informs Driss they are leaving and instructs him not to ask any questions. Yvonne tries to convince Philippe to wait for Eleanor, a woman he has been corresponding with, but he is determined to leave and exits the restaurant. Eleanor arrives just as he departs, missing him by moments. Driss sees his mother leaving for home but cannot bring himself to face her. He goes to Philippe's mansion, where Philippe takes him on a journey in his private jet to a faraway location. Philippe hands Driss an envelope containing 11,000 euros, the price of a painting Driss had created. Overwhelmed with joy, Driss tells Philippe he always knew he was an artist. He just needed a chance. They share a laugh. They arrive at a skydiving site where Philippe decides to skydive once again, much to Driss's horror. He believes Philippe is crazy, but Philippe, with nothing to lose, convinces a terrified Driss to join him. They end up skydiving together, enjoying the exhilaration after a long day. Returning home, Driss unexpectedly encounters his brother at Philippe's mansion. He learns his brother is entangled in a dangerous conflict with threatening individuals who have jeopardized their family. Philippe overhears the situation and realizes Driss will leave him. He tells Driss that if he wants to go, he can, as he will not spend his life being served by a man who is paralyzed. Deeply saddened, Driss shares his life story with Philippe for the first time. He reveals that the people he lives with are not his biological parents, but his aunt and uncle, who, unable to have children, adopted him from his parents in Senegal. However, his aunt later became pregnant and the house filled with children. Despite this, he still considers them his true family. The next day, Driss departs, and Philippe watches him sadly from the window, having lost his only friend. A new assistant is hired for Philippe, but he remains upset and misses Driss. Driss returns to his old neighborhood to care for his brother and protect his family. He applies for a new job, gets hired, and begins to change for the better leaving behind his irresponsible and unemployed past. One day, Philippe falls seriously ill and asks his assistant to bring Driss to him. She rushes to Driss's home and requests he visit Philippe. Driss agrees and takes Philippe in his car, recreating the opening scene of the film as they evade the police. They go to a hotel to enjoy their time together. Driss shaves Philippe's long beard, and they head to a restaurant overlooking the sea. There, Driss has a surprise for Philippe. He has invited Eleanor to the restaurant. He tells Philippe he cannot escape like last time. Eleanor arrives and accepts Driss for who he is, as she truly loves Philippe. Philippe looks at Driss, the man who changed his life, taught him courage, and showed him how to live each moment with joy. We have reached the end of the summary. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and activate the bell to watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching.